How's it going, everyone? Well, uh, kind of got the hiccups. Hopefully they pass. I wanted to talk for a minute about dualism, but um, not in the traditional sense. I suppose I could say uh, Cartesian dualism would be the thing that would come to mind. Cartesian dualism is it's another term for Descartes, René Descartes, and it was his form of dualism. Descartes was the one who came up with the term, well, you probably heard, I think, therefore I am. The actual definition would be, I reason, therefore I am. But you can take it however you want. It's irrelevant. What it means is that the only thing we can know for sure is that since we're thinking, that sense is working. And that is the evidence for our existence. Now dualism, by definition, is generally a religious term merely because accepting dualism is in a way accepting the supernatural. It's saying that the universe has created two sides to every coin, that everything has an opposite and for a while I rejected dualism only because I was going by society's definition of it. In other words, let's take hot and cold for example. You could think of that as a dual nature, but hot and cold is only in a subjective experience. It's a subjective experience to if you're cold and you go into a hot room or a warm room that'll be hot to you. If you're out in 120 degree weather and you walk into that same warm room it may be cooler by contrast so therefore it's a cooler room there is no such thing as hot or cold and cold is merely the absence of heat you can extend this into so many different aspects of you know up and down what is up and down you know depends on which way you are standing if you're you know <clears throat> so when you start getting into these hmm what ifs you start to reject dualism by the nature of seeing that it's all about perspective. So to step back and kind of uh, nail down what I'm trying to convey here, it was an interesting thing I realized earlier when I was, um, well I've noticed when I'm in altered states and I'm seeking a certain awareness or a lesson, things will come through in very metaphorical symbols and, and uh, feelings and I generally get what I ask for when I'm wanting to know something. The question is, do you know the question? And I don't always know the question I want to ask. But it's usually a very simple thing. And in this, this time, something came to me when I felt some cold on my left hand or I bumped something. And I thought, you know, if I feel the same temperature on both hands, it won't throw off, say, my meditation. Let's say somebody brushes your arm while you're sitting there with your eyes closed and you feel that on one side. Now, I don't know if how many people out there will understand where I'm coming from when I start talking about um, obsessive compulsive behaviors or tics. Um, many people have strange tics, habits, twitches, or things that they do that is due to, it seems like the, the more um, the more intellectual a person is, it seems like the more tics they have, and perhaps that's because they have too much to think about. I'm not sure, but it's a very, it also has to do with what we're consuming and whatnot, but I mean that would be like a twitch or a habit where you're like doing something in particular. Everybody's got their twitches and habits, but it can also be walking on the sidewalk and not stepping on cracks. If you've ever bumped something with your left foot and then you bump it with your right foot so you can keep that balanced, I did that all through my youth. It was something that I carried up until recent years and I still catch myself doing, but I wasn't aware of doing it. I was seeking balance through physical means. It's, it's very hard to explain, but uh, those who have had that know what I mean. If I were to brush my left hand, I would brush my right hand the same way. And it's a, it's a nervous habit, it's an anxiety type habit that comes from living in this world. but. But what I realized about it was that, <clears throat> and this is why people go into float tanks, and this is why people want to suspend themselves and not feel their body, 
one slight, you know, touch or a bump or a sound in the background can pull you out of your state of consciousness, of your meditation or your, you know, whatever you're doing. And uh, so it's important to diminish the senses. So you have the sense of touch, obviously. If something bumps your body, it's going to throw you out of your loop. Um, and it's funny because I started thinking touch, the dualism of touch, left and right. If something pokes you on your left side, it allows you to jump to the right. If you feel something soft and wonderful on the left, it allows you to pull more towards the left. If you're standing in one place and you catch a smell, a wafting smell, you can turn and lean towards it, or you can turn in disgust away from it, because you have two nostrils. Hearing, obviously, is the same way. We hear a sound that we like, we can turn towards it, or we can turn away from it. But there are... <laughs> I, hmm. I guess taste it would be one where it's a little bit different. Taste is kind of everywhere. The taste buds are kind of spread out everywhere. But, but I consider taste and smell to be one and the same. So what about consciousness? Now, and this is where I'm leading up to. We have all these different um, um, senses. And then we have what we would call the, the, the sixth sense, which is consciousness. Not intuition, but consciousness itself. And sometimes you might hear something from your left brain. And sometimes you might hear something from your right brain. And you may pull away, or you may lean in towards it. You can reject it, or you can accept it. You can love it, or you can hate it. And I think this is very important, because if we're going to consider thought to be a sense in itself, and it should be, then there's no reason that it can't be dualistic. And of course, we know that the hemispheres in the brain have different mechanisms of, of action. And there have been cases of, um, you know, people with even a split brain still being able to function, yet in different capacities. Our hemispheres of our brain communicate, and that is the nature of the duality. It's within us. It's physical, but it's also mental. And I think once we cross that threshold of what we cannot see, it becomes a lot of speculation. And I'll tell you, even in some of my clearest states of mind in my life, I've stepped back and wondered you know, how do I know for sure that what I think I know is right? And usually I come away realizing that I can't be sure. But so many people are so very sure of themselves. Um, they create a picture of the way that the world works. See, by nature, let's say atheism has to reject dualism, because dualism assumes that there's a system in place rather than a chaotic, you know, uh, that, that there's some sort of... Um, it might you might come back to karma. Karma would be the ultimate form of balance through dualism, if you will. But but I'll go now because I've gone on too much on this already, and uh, I just wanted to get that point across. So I'll talk to y'all soon. And